Good morning. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> Eric, you've uh, spoken about Ed quite a, quite a bit this season, but if you could just comment on his game uh, last week and the amount of interior pressure that he created. Just, uh, just consistent with what he's been doing all year, uh, we challenged uh, our front four. Ed's a part of that to collapse the pocket. Um, against Rudolph to really just obstruct his looks inside and be in a position to get our hands up. The ball was coming out at an exceptional rate, and so we wanted to do that. We had a lot of hits on the quarterback, and Ed led the charge with that third down. Uh, one of the third downs, he has a really nice hit uh, on Rudolph, and so he just continued what he's been doing all year, the energy, the effort, just real pleased with what we were able to do as a defensive front, and Ed was a part of that. To this week. How big is that against Mahomes? Brady always said that interior pressure was the, the thing that bothered him the most. Without question, you know, uh, protection concepts want, would like to set the depth of the pocket. It gives the quarterback an opportunity to survey, go through his reads and progressions, and then step up in the pocket if things start to extend. And we have to make sure we take that away from the opponent, not just this week, but every week. That's a goal that we have, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one win or it's collectively as a unit of just – you know, kind of denting the pocket of, or obstructing the looks for the quarterback. And to Jay's point, the last time you guys played Kansas City, you didn't have Daquan, and now you do. Now I know there's a lot of other injuries on that side of the ball, but what can he do to kind of make Ed even more dangerous and also obviously impose his own will? Right, just what I just mentioned, and uh, uh, last year when Daquan was with us when we uh, played in Kansas City, he did a really good job of uh, winning his one-on-one -on -one and taking the depth away from the pocket. So now Ed had a chance to work. All of a sudden, that you know, he, DeJuan, excuse me, Daquan accumulates blocks by collapsing the pocket. Now, hopefully, that gives Ed a little bit more room to work and to roam. That first Chiefs game started your current win streak. came after that bye week. How important was that week for a coaching staff to sort of figure out what wasn't working, what can be added, what may be taken out of the scheme? It was, it was, it was everything. I mean, we, it, was, it gave us an opportunity to really look critically at ourselves, to do some self-reflecting, and to also appreciate and know that we had, a, we had a pretty good defense, that we just had to get to a certain level of consistency with our play, be more opportunistic, really, really uh, emphasize taking the ball away, which is you know, one of our calling cards, so to speak. And um, the guys have been doing a tremendous job with that. The takeaways that we've been able to, to get uh, from the Kansas City game all the way through last week, those things have really helped us. So it gave us a chance to really take a step back, to look at what's been working and what we needed to improve in every aspect and to just move forward with that messaging and, and how we plan with the players. I know you've been dealing with navigating injuries the entire season. How much do you have to change in game as certain guys go down, or have you been able to stay the course and plan you've wanted and just simply plug in you guys? Yeah, it, we, we would like to stay the course. And every player uh, has their individual strengths and some of the things that we know about them, but we expect everybody to fit into our defensive construct. And the next person has to go in and execute. We won't change how we call the game or change the game plan or change the approach because one player is not available and someone else has to move into that role. Uh, we, st we still expect to be able to call the game, to um, utilize the various coverage packages that we have, pressure packages and in front and coverage combinations. We just w we want to continue to move forward. And that's why we really, really have to develop the depth. And that's something that we talk about all the way back in the offseason, making sure we have quality depth, making sure that every player every week is prepared to step in. How much of a challenge is it facing Isaiah Pacheco and what he's been able to do this season? Well, uh, he's, he's like the elite backs that we see. I mean, we saw two pretty good ones last week. And uh, he, this is just another guy that presents similar challenges. Very physical, very downhill type runner. Great contact balance. He'll break tackles. The, the best thing about this young man is he protects the football. We talk about taking the football away. He's done an outstanding job of protecting the football. So we can't be overzealous in trying to get the ball away from him and, miss and end up missing tackles. And uh, so just another, just another challenge for us and one that, we, that we'll be prepared to meet. Eric, all your time in the league, have you ever been around a defense that has lost this many players due to injury and 
had to shuffle guys in and out so so often? Not that I can recall. I mean, uh, not that I can recall, but it also it, it's it's challenging. But it also speaks to what I just mentioned. Uh, the, the coaches have done a really good job of making sure that everyone in the in the in our respective meeting rooms, everyone's plugged in, and they feel engaged in what we're doing. Even the guys who are working, the scout team looks primarily. They're working on position fundamentals as they prepare our offense, and so. I can't, I can't recall a scenario where we've had, you know, but it's also gave, given us an opportunity to really identify the character that we have, and I think the guys have done a great job. And to follow up on that, that, that starts at the top with Sean, right? I mean, statistically, you look back, and he's had defense that are maybe better than this, but, it, I mean, can you speak to the job that he's done of making sure that it, the defense stays the course and, and is where it is right now? Well, the messaging has been consistent. And from what I've uh, seen with Sean, there's been absolutely no panic. There's been no indicators from him and how he's addressed the team every single week when we've had guys available and when we have not had some of our higher profile players that this is a challenge that we can't meet. And that he instills confidence in every single person in the room when we talk as a collective. And you can tell the guys feel like, man, when I get my opportunity, I'm going to be expected to go out and to perform at the same level and to do the things that are uh, characteristic of our defense. And so the messaging has been really, really consistent. It's been strong, and I know the guys have responded. How would you describe the character of this defense? Um, tough. Just really mentally tough. Um, we, were, we were meeting today, um, and one of the things that, you know, you, when you're 6-6, six and six, or wherever we were, you can look at that and say, listen, we're down a couple of scores in the ball game. You can use that analogy or whatever. And our guys just keep fighting. They keep plugging away. Um, and they and whatever has happened, they just continue to, to have a belief in themselves and to stay mentally strong. Um, and that would be the one thing that just stands out. We've got great physical toughness and all of those things, but the mental toughness, no one has – all of a sudden abandon their beliefs and what we're doing. And it's just been really, really cool to watch. What is your perception on the role that Mike and Jordan, guys who've been here, as long as you've been here and been here since Sean's been here, the role that they have in kind of leading this defense and, you know, when you're talking about this toughness that they have, what role do they play in all A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of confidence. They're, they're tremendous communicators. And they don't just communicate to the people in their position group. These guys, Jordan and Mike, are talking to everyone on the defense. So there's a relationship there that we can really, that, that lends itself to that cohesiveness, that sense of family, that sense of group that we have to compete with when we go out on the football field. You know, it's not just on the back end. It's not just on our linebacker group or the guys up front. We have to play as a cohesive unit. And there's a lot of confidence. There's a lot of tremendous communication that, that you see on and off the practice field and, on, and in, even in the boundary on game day. There's a lot of cross communication, a lot of guys talking to each other and encouraging each other and, and just working through all of the different situations we find ourselves in. How you beneficial about... is it to have someone like AJ step in um, who has experience, years of experience calling the defense when TV exits the game last week? <laughs> I mentioned to AJ uh, after the game because I've been with AJ just about for most of his career, going back to uh, Carolina. And I've not seen anyone, he's, he's unusual in, in my opinion, you know, a person that can come in. And it also speaks to his level of, of, of readiness, just staying prepared and being able to come in and just his knowledge of what we're doing, how thoroughly uh, immersed he is in what we're doing philosophically, our scheme, and the fact that the young man, just he's, he's just ready to go. And um, to go in and to give us those types of quality snaps in a critical situation, I, I, I can't say enough about him. And I've, fortunately, I've been in a position to, to witness that for a long time. You talked about Cam Lewis's versatility in the past. He was saying yesterday how he kind of goes like nickel one day and like transitions throughout the week sure. of what he's getting ready for. What's it like watching him prepare throughout a week when he has all those on his plate? Well, um, first of all, he, he, Cam knows how to compartmentalize each role and prepare himself for all of the different things based on what we're working on. You know, uh, yesterday is the first and second down day, so now he can really focus on which role he's likely to be to, to, to occupy in that situation. And as we progress 
he transitions to the other role. So he does a good job of organizing the things that he will, the, the things, the contingencies that he may find himself in so that he's ready to go with each particular situation if it comes up. Or just that. Well, um, it, it's, it's not easy, but it requires someone that is dedicated, someone that uh, invests away from the schedule, and um, that it just requires a tremendous investment on, on Cam's part to be prepared for three different roles that could come up. And listen, you may only play one, one position, but you have to be ready to address three different positions. That's not easy, but he's done a great job with that. What did you see from Von Miller in particular late in the game against the Steelers? Uh, some of the things that are, that are characteristic of what Von can do as a, as a pass rusher and a guy to have his situation. He, uh, he won decisively. Uh, he did that with a variety of, of rush moves. He got a hit on the quarterback. And the quickness, the speed, and most importantly, the confidence. The confidence to engage power, to go speed to power, to change directions quickly and rapidly. I, I, you know, those are the things that, that, that I'm used to seeing. Those are the things that I know will show up for us, at, you know, in the right time. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing that this week. Your plan, like in game, going in when you're game planning, to kind of maybe save some of his reps for late in the game because of how effective he could be in that time. Well, you know, we every game's a little bit different, and uh, you know, if, if if Vaughn enters the game on first and second down, I you know I expect him for to to execute and to do the things we have to do with nine guys available at, to to rotate. I'm cognizant of trying to make sure that we have you know, we, that we're doing exactly what you just mentioned, that in a critical situation, he still has the energy, the juice, if you will, to go out and, and, and get us stops and to, and to create game-changing plays in those situations. But we have to get to that situation, which means we need efficiency in other areas. But that's the great thing about having so many good players to rotate in and out of the football game. It just, it, it's a great, it gives us a lot of flexibility on Sunday. Through all the injuries that the defense has had, how have you and the defensive staff come together to think outside of the box of what you're normally calling with a healthy defense to to help play to the strengths of the guys on the field? You know, Maddie, that, that really has not come up the way that, that you might imagine. Um, you know, we, we've lost some really tough players. We've lost some major contributors. And when we go in the meeting room, we don't talk about calling the game or organizing the game plan against the opponent because of that. I've not heard that or seen that. We're talking about who's going to be next, who's available, whatever adjustments we have to make. But as far as uh, changing the overall philosophy that we have against the opponent, that, that just does not come up. We expect that player, that person, to come in and to execute. And that's why, they, why, why they're here, <laughs> because we believe that whether they're in a reserve role or rotational role, that they can go out and execute our package. And what does that say to the confidence that you guys have in the people who are ready to go if those starters get injured? Well, a coach's responsibility is to communicate and install confidence along with the various schemes and making, uh, making sure the players understand situations. They have to know that, that we believe in them as, as, as performers, as contributors, as people. They have to be able to feel that and understand that. It needs to be authentic and real. And th that's not hard to do when you're in the position with the guys that we have in the locker room and my involvement with them and what we've been able to see. That's not, that's not a stretch at all.